What's up, gang? This is Ken Zerk, Ken Zilling, and Zika Milligan, the Villain Village Villigan. We are back on Dong and Rumpa Trigger, Happy Happy. Last episode, we did all the investigating, and now we're about to do the class trial. Mm -hmm. But you see, here's the thing about it, though. I don't really know if I remember everything from the investigation because last episode was last episode was yesterday. So, <laughs> I mean, not yesterday, last week. Uh, so I might be a little lost. <laughs> But I do remember this, okay? I know Toko is the, is um Genocide Jack. And I also know she's not the killer. I know Byakuya is the killer. Oh well, I think he is. That's my suspicions. Ahem! Is everybody ready to What? Hmm? Am I blind or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is. You really don't remember? Come on! Kidding! I'm just kidding. How could I forget that little nut job? She's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? Okie dokie. I'll go ahead and drag her out here, kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. Just like you said, a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. Dang. <laughs> I told him I didn't want to go, but he forced me. I can't believe you would drag a girl around. Yeah. Terrible! You're terrible! Yeah. Ooh, oh, okay. All right. Just screw you. Okay, then. Hustle onto the elevator and let's get this show on the road. <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed your hero. See, he's trying to take a leadership role to hide the fact that he's the guilty party. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and meek. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a girl like that. All right, I remember, I remember. The reason I don't think it's Toko is because we know Toko Genocide Jack. I don't think it's her because Genocide Jack only kills with scissors. And Byakuya is the only person who knows how Genocide Jack kills. He knows that Genocide Jack only suspend, only every time Genocide Jack kills, they suspend the victims in the air and they write bloodlust in the back. But he didn't notice that she only kills with scissors. That's why he killed her with um, the dumbbell instead. Because, and that's how we know it isn't Toko, because Toko only kills with scissors. Because Toko is Genocide Jack. And that murderer is one of us, Byakuya. Standing right here, Byakuya. It's Byakuya! We have no choice, right? We have to do this. It's true. Yes. I gave a small nod and reply. With one last deep breath, I walked towards the elevator on shaky legs. With each step forward, I could feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everybody was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions. I couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness in my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally, it came to a sudden stop. Y'all like my reading voice and stuff? Like, what do you think? I redecorated. Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? <laughs> Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Very nice. Good, good. You're rip roaring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well. Okay then, let's get this show on the road. Thrills, chills, Everyone, please thrills. find your seats. And so the curtains opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly deception, and a deadly betrayal. You about to say this corny crap again? A deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly faith. Okay. A deadly class trial. <laughs> Cornball. You really like you really think you freaking We're not saving, I already saved. 
All right, open e handbook. Let's just look at the two bullets. Okay. I think I have an idea of set skills. Increases damage to the opponent when a statement is destroyed. Effective during the bullet time battle. Uh, increases bullet capacity. Effective during bullet time battle. Can I, I can have both? Okay, fire. I mean, I don't really know what they do. I'm, I'm not too sure about truth bullets, but I'll take them. Let's begin with a basic explanation of the class trial. If you can figure out... Oh my I'll god, I got it. Let's talk about... What was used to do the final fatal fatal blow? All right, it was the dumbbell. We, we know it was the dumbbell. Make my argument! I forgot how to switch. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. Yes. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? What? What kind of blunt? It was a dumbbell. I was, I was gonna tell him that it was a dumbbell. Wait. Chihiro's fatal injury. I can't tell them what the. It appears it was a head wound. Yes. According to the Monokuma file. They have the dumbbell. Genocide Jack. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? It was a dumbbell. I bet it was an iron pipe. Are you actually still? Hey! Yo, chop, chop, get to it, dog. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? I bet it was an iron pipe. Get out of here, bro. No, that's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? Facts. It was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. Why did you even say that stupid crap? I bet it was an iron pipe. Shut up. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. She got dented. As far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Yes! That's so what did you want her to do? She got to invest. Shut up. If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? For real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. Genocide Jack, the fiendish serial killer. Did he really kill Chihiro? Oh my god. See, Sonny was telling me about this. They are never gonna stop adding new crap to this, bro. Lines of white noise will appear to disrupt your reactions. The truth bullets will disappear if they hit these lines. So think of them as options. But there's no, but there's a way to keep the noise from getting. Press the right mouse button to attach a silencer, which you can use to shoot down the white noise. However, if you shoot an actual remark with your silencer, the time limit will decrease. If you set the gentle, white noise won't appear at all. You can forget about the silencer. Good luck, have fun. All right. What are my truth bullets? Dumbbell, desk lamp, case file, okay. The culprit is Genocide Jack, I'm sure. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But case style. Why? Lamp. What makes it impossible? Dumbbell. Look, I mean, come on. There's just no proof for it. No, that's wrong. No, that's wrong. I might know one reason he could be involved. See, the thing is, we're not going to get to Byakuya at first because Makoto doesn't know about the scissors things. He's too stupid. He doesn't notice that. He's too stupid to notice it. So right now, we are going to have to suspect Toko, and then we're going to gradually start suspecting Byakuya. What? I think that's going to go I found this on. file while I was looking around the archive in the library. 
I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? I don't know. The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Ooh, shut up. No, it's actually bloodlust. But more important is the other characteristic, and it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? They're, they get suspended Why in the air. Why don't you tell them, Makoto? A gun! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police if there's only one oh, logical crap. answer I can think of? It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. Or because they have access to the files and they read them all the time. Byakuya! No fucking way! Watch your mouth. You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Oh, dang. What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! What? what? Hey, okay, wait, oh, hold on a sec. They're like, hold on! Bloodophobia or whatever, remember? What kind of serial killer is afraid of blood? It's an alter ego. Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Bro, just explain it. Stop being vague. I mean, I already know what's going on, but explain it to the stupid people. It seems like a riddle in a way, but I feel like I just about see it. Genocide Jack is Toko, but it isn't Toko. What does it mean? Ah, you goober. Hangman's Gambit. I don't know. T. B. Dang, I lost. Nobody believes me. Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. Hey. Uh-uh, I don't want to hear it. Oh. I refuse to give up yet. Oh, snap. Okay. So it's not T, it's not B, it's not L, it's not S. Is it O? It's H, I. Maybe another H? It's not L. Another I? What is it? A C? Move! I don't know what the letter is, bro. What letter am I looking for? Oh, it's S. Okay, what? S. Sky. Schizo! It's schizo! It's schizo! Okay. Schizo! She's a schizo. Now I understand. I'm not good at Hangman. I've never been good at Hangman. Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Huh? I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? 
dissociative identity disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly acceptable. I mean, y'all didn't see how she acted crazy after seeing blood? Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. Other thing that shows she can have has to do with her behavior. Her behavior oh changed. You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. Think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then when she woke up. I'm fine. I'm fine. Yeah. Whoa! Is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? Yeah. You must have hit her head real hard. The world has a front and a back, a top ending and a bottom, a sea of truth and a web of lies. Bro, she tripping. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tongue without permission. Not to mention, once she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can't handle blood, and one that obviously can. Mm. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? I won't let Genocide Jack have control! I'll drive the killer! I'll drive out the killer! I'll drive out the murderous fiend! The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her other personality from getting out. What? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. How? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She told me a most interesting story. Yeah, he knows about her split personality, and that's how he knew he could get away with the killing. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> this is all a lie. Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? Dang! You promised! I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. Dang. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... I'm sorry I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry, never again. I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? I never said that. See, the thing about it, though, is this. Toko probably doesn't remember what happens when she turns into Genocide Jack. She probably only knows the aftermath. Because remember, one of the files said that... They tend to like run away in a panic afterwards. After killing, they run away in a panic. That's because Toko doesn't wake up. Toko doesn't see what Genocide Jack is doing. She sees what Genocide Jack did after waking up. And when she sees the aftermath of Genocide Jack, she just runs. Like she, she gets terrified and runs away. So if, if somebody else did kill Chihiro in the same way Genocide Jack does, Toko wouldn't know. Toko would have to assume it was her. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control. 
control it. But, but... but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. You see how hard he's pressing? That's because he knows. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person no, that's wrong. Question directly. No, that's wrong. Person, you don't mean. Toko's body suddenly lunged backwards. A huge thud echoed across the courtroom, but in the next second. Hey! Hello, hello there. Is it me you were hoping to see? Oh, it's the goat. What the heck? So you figured it out, huh? Well, whatever. What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! Why? What the fuck is this? Yo! Yeah. What happened to Bro, she done did a whole 180. Not Toko. That's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. Oh, that's adorable. She's so intense. Like they say, sound and murderous mind, sound and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front, front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths of every truth lives a little lie. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! Okay. She poetic with it. <laughs> this is the murderous fiend genocide Jack. This is this is this is insane! Um, Miss Jack, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you, I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then, it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! That's kind of mean. And another thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Yeah, that's kind of, they're kind of, they're kind of weird. Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live, it's a necessary oh, crap. evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. That's true. Just kidding again! Oh, dang! <laughs> I mean, I wasn't a lie, though. This should be enough. I mean, if you if you're alive, this murderous fiend hush. is responsible for Chihiro's well, I'm death. Talking. If you live and like, if you, you know, if you live, you're gonna cause trouble for people. Like, I, I can't, you can't avoid causing trouble and pain for other people if you're alive. So, like, if if you don't want to cause any problems in this world, just kill yourself. But you know, that's kind of stupid. So just live with it. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. A motive? Remember what Monokuma told us. If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. See, now that's stupid because... Why would you reveal Genocide Jack to avoid Genocide Jack being revealed? That doesn't make sense. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. I'm confident Toko would rather go to jail than constantly let Genocide Jack live. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Yeah, I believe her. I don't think she lied. But I cannot imagine. Anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster. Maybe. Maybe she's right about that, but something's still bothering me. What she said, I need to get more details about all of this. All right, let's do it. Sorry, 
but I didn't kill anyone. You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Okay. Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now, now we're talking. talking. When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. What more proof do we need? <laughs> Give it up. You killed her. All right, it's right there. The the operandi or whatever it's called. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone. Facts. The modus operandi matches complete. No, that's wrong. Methods of murder really exactly the exactly. Same? Genocide so Jack sure only that. kills with scissors. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Huh? How's it any different? Uh oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you. I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that. In, In a way, way that makes sense. Maybe makes more sense. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. This killer didn't kill with scissors, and they used ropes to suspend instead of, like, you know, crucifying them with scissors. I got it. For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. Uh-huh. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with... A pair of scissors. Not a pair of scissors, multiple pairs of scissors. But Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, uh, yes. That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's more. One more conflicting detail. Extension cord. That's right. In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Man, that tongue is long! Can you please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, no. are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? I got it! Do you remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous Genocide Jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Scissors. Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement. Like I said, I'm a professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. And, 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 and you know what else? Oh, what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac. Big Mac? Are you referring to me? Listen up, Big Mac. There's actually one more difference. What? Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case. Oh, she only kills dudes. There's a pattern there just waiting to be discovered. She only kills dudes? Pattern. Figure that out. Killed that little lolly girl. That is not nice. Don't say that. I got it. Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo Bullseye right on the money. I just got that. I just got that. What are you talking about? <laughs> Bingo Bullseye right on the money. In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They were dudes. They were all guys? That's right! 
the people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men. <laughs> I can't believe I said it. I'm so embarrassed. The hell is wrong with you? <laughs> that boy's scared. I can't help it. I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fan girl, and the mopey side of me just hates it. But now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam. So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man. You wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. That's a very good metaphor. I have too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of the one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not. It's a different matter entirely when you're forced to kill in order to survive. I don't think Genocide Jack cares about that. I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! Uh, yeah, like, come on. That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors. Who would go out of their way to use a big stupid heavy dumbbell maybe you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school if she couldn't find scissors she just wouldn't kill them probably any scissors oh she you only uses her scissors I don't just use any scissors i only use my own set of high class hey yo stop licking my screen dog scissors. okay whatever there still aren't any in the school are you sure about that? Oh, Lord. Da, 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 da! Hey, that's hard. She's fully equipped. She got that on, though. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Woo! Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? Go ahead. Tell me I'm wrong. You can't pin you gutter dogs, all of you. Okay, sheesh. I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal, and not some copycat killer or whatever. Oh, let me get to him. Hold on, let me get to that boy. Let me get to that boy. Let me get to that boy. Get to that boy. Look, he's nervous. He's nervous. Hold on. Oh, bow. Oh, wait. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Bow. Here's my answer. Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the genocide jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Saying Mr. Togami did it? Woo! Then the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it. The adorable glasses man was behind it all? Oh, I'm on fire! Calm down! What's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. <laughs> Celeste, calm down. Then I must ask, when would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now, the way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. In the locker room. That's a very suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? What? It seems nobody searched the locker room. Let's start with the girls' locker room. He knew! Like you wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? 
The victim was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girl's locker We didn't know who the victim was yet, Goober. Nothing strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very, very strange. strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Look, get that cocky smirk off your face when you get a cock in your face. Keep playing with me. Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. One clear contradiction. I need to make it clear. Oh, my goodness. What is it? Truth flashback. If you aim at a weak spot and hold the left mouse button, then you'll memorize that weak spot. This memorized face can only be shot once as a single truth bullet. If you shoot or change the truth bullet, it will disappear from your truth cylinder. Or you can use this flashback feature as many times as you want. If you don't seem to have the answer to a lie or contradiction in your loaded truth bullets, it might be wise to memorize a different weak spot and use that to make your case. When's the best time to flashback? You'll just have to use your keen wits, won't you? In this case, though, I'll say if you don't use a flashback, you won't be refuting anything. Well then, good luck and have fun. If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room, you Yo, shut up, dog! That's a natural reaction for any guy! Shut up, bro. The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. What's so strange about that? You wish you'd take me with you? Hearing Biakuya's comment about your hero being a girl, I realize there's a clear contradiction there. I need to make that contradiction clear. So, you said Biakuya was acting kind of weird before we found his body. Yeah. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room... Calm down! Absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! The victim was Chihiro, who was a girl. So, of course, I would suggest we check the girls' locker room first. There was no time for pointless distractions. So... What's so strange about that? You wish you'd taken me with you? So, you said Byakuya was acting kind of weird before we found the body. No, that's wrong. Kind of weird before we found the body. That he was acting weird. How? Bro, come on, chop, chop, and get to it, bro. To check out the girls' locker room. You absolutely take it. That's a natural reaction for any guy. The victim was Chihiro. Okay, yeah, cause he did it. It was not Chihiro. No, you didn't know it was Chihiro until we got in there, Goober. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. I was confused. I didn't even know how the flashback worked, bro. And then he pointed out Yakuya's argument. That confused me more. Like, is that what I'm supposed to make flashback? I, I, I just didn't know, bro. I just didn't know. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Interesting. Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Your auntie is too ugly. What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What is with his attitude? He doesn't care. He's acting, I've got him cornered, but he's acting like he's got nothing to do What's with him. You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. I and mean, that's all I need! Defend yourself! There is, I think. There is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Kyoko, if you don't start pull pulling some weight, bro, I'm carrying right now. There's a between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. Extension court. It's the extension cord. What? 
The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. Okay. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro okay. was suspended with... It was some kind of rope. Was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Then there must Shut be up. something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Oh, you jerk! Somebody you jerk! Away, so. Oh, my... You! Mm, I'm gonna get you! I'm gonna get you! Oh, my goodness! Wh why? Bro! <laughs> that was just so terrible! Screw you! <laughs> Screw you, bro! I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Hit it! Yes! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say... That extension cord? What? An extension cord? Yakuya. You've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. And Byakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Yes. Is that about right? Yes. That is just about right. He's just trying to... He's saying it in a way that makes it look stupid. It's a defense tactic. Without, look, without sounding defensive. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned, as if he's not even involved. Not even What's involved. Wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Yes! Oh, yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Biaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept what? The game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh? Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. I know, but still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Wait, what was that just now? Something's not right. There's something in there that concerns me. Wait, what? I'm not gonna lie, I wasn't paying no attention. Is it the scene of the crime? John. You say you killed Chihiro in the girl's locker room, right? Oh yeah, and he has access to the girl's locker room. But are you sure about that? Isn't hmm. it possible that the murder took place somewhere else? What? How disappointing. What kind of question is that? Even in the world of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? Well, I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. <gasps> she was killed in a boys' locker room, and then he switched the boys' and girls' locker rooms around. The rest of the murder scene? That was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. Because it's not like he can go in the girls' locker room anyways, because there's still a camera there. So if Monokuma sees him going in there without proper permission, like whether he has a girl's 
ebook or not, he will still be murdered. I believe I do. Hey, Bianca, did you just... Did I take just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Bianca, who'd been so confident up till now, maybe Bianca never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Oh, disappearing stain. That's your proof, sorry, but you're ridiculously wrong. That's the best you've got. That's not the best you've got, is it? Wait, what? Okay, that... About to make me mad. This has to be it, then. Okay. But I say, if the that's not it, then that, that has to be it. Somewhere else is the poster that's hanging in each locker room. I mean, that's stupid, though. Like, you could just say that somebody took down the poster and put it in the other room. You could say that. Like, you, it could, the only thing you have to, bro. That's stupid. That's stupid. The disappearing stain is better proof. Your proof is some posters? The poster in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. But don't you think that's kind of strange? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Calm down! Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. They ugly though. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boys' locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? And there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? The disappearing you're stain. You're referring to my protein coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? What? In other words, in order to completely swap the scene mm. of the crime. Okay, I get it, I get it. It's not that Byakuya couldn't go into the girl's locker room. He wanted to make it seem like he didn't. Because he wanted to make it seem like it. That's why he hit the he hit the fact about the um the girls' ebooks. He hit the fact about the girls' e handbooks, which would be his way of going into the girls' locker room. The bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. I can certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Are you not entertained? Are you stupid? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? <sighs> to get into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. I could put two things on this. The fact that Chihiro didn't have her handbook, and the other fact that Byakuya, I mean, not Byakuya, um, Chihiro didn't like going with women, so she probably went with a man who was probably Byakuya. Bro, she did have a way. 
and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Dang. Ah, I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is it really possible? Could Chikuro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah, I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. Mmm, that's possible. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her. No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Oh, he knows about it. Huh? What thing? Oh, and Leon's was broken. No, it's wrong. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh, well then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Actually, the rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. And you killed your hero and used her handbook. Which was missing! Yep, yep, yep. Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. You she dug yourself a hole. Like I said, she used her own. No. You can't fix an e handbook. The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring. So if she didn't use Leon's handbook and she didn't modify her own handbook, maybe Mr. Nyagi's initial assumption is just wrong. Well, how did she get in there then? It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So I guess so. Okay then, I vote for Byakuya. Is that it then? Chihiro was killed in a girls' locker room and Byakuya was the one who did it? Really? Lord, please tell me Byakuya was the one who did it. I do not want this man to survive. Hold on a second. I agree with you though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So, why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. What, like, yeah, what if, what if, um, bro let her in? What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. So, shall we go? So before I even knew what had was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. And where she took us was... The girls' locker room? Okay. We've already searched this place top to bottom. <gasps> what are you trying to pull, Missy? Wasn't it broken? I'd like you to examine the victim's oh. body one more time. Oh, she doesn't have her um, ebook. Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her. Shut up. No, wait, no, wait, no, wait. It's 
probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm freaked out or anything, it's just... based on religious grounds, you know? Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S Sakura? What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop screwing around! Bro, she a freak! Calm down! Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Bro, she about to go Super Saiyan? Her eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! What?! 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 Ah, I see. So... He was actually a he. What? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. It's really true? Hero was a guy? That definitely explains it! Huh? Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat! Chihiro Fujisaki was totally a guy! <laughs> he was a cross-dresser? Oh, I'm really on fire! I wish I had killed him! So that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting! Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial! What the yes. freak?! I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then, let's resume the class trial. That is crazy! That, that was a plot twist, what the heck? We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well... I don't know his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. To think Chihiro was actually a guy, the thought had never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Okay, so that means Byakuya really did just kind of borrow the e-handbook. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room, and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. And the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but... Yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! Tit! So now everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever. Yeah, who's the killer then? You still think you're the killer, remember? Yeah, I I'm still saying Byakuya. <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, 
He's off in his own little world. Oh, Lord. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya is the killer? Kyoko! What? Bro, I'm so lost right now. I am so lost right now. Nobody else? I, I can't think of anybody else who fits in this. Well, without a doubt, Byakuya is the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. Did Chihiro kill herself with the dumbbell, dumbbell or something? What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? He just seems to be too easygoing about all this. Like he's enjoying a solving all right, bro. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. He's having fun. That's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy. If you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct for the time being. Man, why couldn't you be the killer, bro? I want you to die. Mark it as correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girl's locker room and decided to alter it. Are you fucking with us right now? What, bro? Okay, then it had to have been a girl who did it. Who could have done it? No, I am not effing with you right now. I'm telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then... Oh! Why? Oh! Why do you do oh! that to his body? Wait! Wait a second! It was... What's his name? It was the dude with the... It with the Yujiro Hanma hair! Because he's the only person besides Kyoko... He's the only dude, the only guy with access to the boys' locker room, besides Byakuya, who knows where the e-handbooks are. So he'd be able to get into the girls' locker room to switch things around and hide her body. It, it's him! My reasons hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well... I don't think I can say No, I know who it is. It Let's anymore. get it going. I know who it is. We're seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear. Look at you, you I getting think. nervous. Now, now we getting closer suspecting you, you getting nervous. No, I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility. Because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have to make our decision. Calm down now. I mean, not Byakuya, Kiyotaka. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game mm. of hide and seek? Oh my god, if Yaki didn't do it, then who's the real killer who murdered your hero? The killer is a guy. Since the crime scene was in the boy's locker room, you would need a boy's handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. But that's still not enough, I need more clues. 